Here's your 60 second history of how we've been keeping time. Sundials keeping time with shadows, unless it's nighttime or cloudy. But hey, we can use stars. Tracking the rotation of 12 stars in the sky, we can tell time. Sound familiar? In 400 BC, we had water clocks. Water flowed from one container to the other, measuring the passage of time. 13th century, game changer, mechanical clocks. Driven by weights and measures, we now had hours, minutes, and seconds. 1656, pendulum clocks. We can more accurately track time by the swinging of a pendulum at a steady rate. This was our go-to for the next 300 years. Now at this point, there's still no synchronous organization of time between people. So in 1847, the British Railways invented Greenwich Mean Time to make sure the trains were on time. And then in 1884, the International Prime Meridian Conference made time synchronization global and invented time zones. Thank you for that. 1927 is fun though. Quartz clocks. Did you know if you electrocute a quartz crystal, it'll vibrate 32,768 times consistently, giving us an insanely accurate way to keep time. So accurate, we still use that in our computers today with our RTC. But in 1967, time went nuclear. Atomic clocks. We can use the vibration of cesium atoms and get nanosecond level time accuracy. That's a billionth of a second. It's so accurate, we outdid the Earth. <laughs> Seriously, sometimes the Earth will rotate slower or faster. And our time is more accurate, so we have to adjust for his bad timekeeping, occasionally adding leap seconds to our own clocks. Atomic clocks can also use rubidium, but cesium is more accurate. In the 1970s, we strapped an atomic clock to a satellite and sent it to space. These GPS satellites orbit the Earth and provide highly accurate time signals to everyone, revolutionizing how we navigate and synchronize time. But what about our computers? Now, even though our computers had quartz crystals helping them keep their time, they were drifting. My computer didn't have the same time as your computer, or Bob's computer, or Sarah's computer. Our computers had no way to synchronize their time across the world. That's where NTP comes in, or the Network Time Protocol. Invented by David Mills, we could actually synchronize our time across the internet and get accuracy within one to 10 milliseconds. And this is what we use right now, but we can get more accurate, and that's where PTP comes in. We go from millisecond accuracy to nanosecond accuracy.